All right, that was a bit of abstraction to digest, and it's also based on still a somewhat hazy idea of what a tree ordinal even is. So let's just get down to some calculations. So we're, we know what phi sub zero is. It's good old fashioned f. So we're already familiar with that. And let's go to the next one. Let's look at phi sub one um, somewhat carefully. So that's something that takes an omega two argument, which might be just an ordinary natural number or uh, a countable uh, ordinal. It doesn't have to be something that's only an omega two. And so that's sort of the control argument. And then the main argument is an omega one and it spits out something in omega one. Okay, so by definition, the very first version of it with control uh, argument zero is just successor. Okay, and that's just like f. <clears throat> so, so far it's really not different from phi sub zero, which is f. Okay, phi sub one of with control argument one applied to beta, by definition, you take the phi sub one of zero function applied beta times two beta. So I'll just abbreviate that by s applied beta times, iterated beta times of beta, where s is the successor function. Okay, so what does that mean? To iterate a successor on beta, beta times, where beta, let's assume, is, um, is infinite, okay? Well, we can actually be slightly, with a t, more general, okay? So let's actually um, not necessarily have them be the same argument quite yet and have not have the diagonalization idea. Let's just say I want to um, uh, iterate successor an arbitrary number of times might be infinite on some other arbitrary infinite argument okay but let's first of all just see what it is when they're when they're finite okay um so suppose that we have two ordinals but they're really just finite numbers and we're going to take l and we're going to iterate successor on that m times well that is pretty obviously just l plus m that's really the fundamental definition of how addition is created out of successor it's just repeated successor Okay, um, it turns out that that's actually totally true in general. Okay, if beta and delta are infinite ordinals, um, and we know what the fundamental sequences are that we attach to those, beta of k and delta of k, and these are really honest to God fundamental sequences because beta and delta are in omega one, and so they are um, they have fundamental sequences that um, are just ordinary sequences based on the natural numbers. Okay, so let's see. S repeated or iterated delta times on beta, the kth element of the fundamental sequence of that is just going to be um, take beta and iterate S delta of k times. Um, so this is, I'm not going to do a lot of proofs here in these, these videos about the tree ordinals and everything, but it's a good opportunity to give you a little taste of how the proofs work. Um, the fundamental proof technique for these guys is just a, is a fancy kind of induction. It is. It's a bit fancier than ordinary induction, but the idea is that anytime you have any ordinal, or really a tree ordinal is what we're going to call it, um, and you have beta of k is an element of a fundamental sequence for that, one of the fundamental things about that is it's considered to be smaller than beta. These things sneak up on the beta that they're fundamental sequences for. Okay, so just as, as ordinary induction uh, supposes, suppose we already know that um, we've already proved that when you take beta, some arbitrary beta, and you iterate the successor delta of k times, that it is in fact equal to beta plus that delta of k number, even if delta of k is already an infinite ordinal. Okay, so suppose we know that. And I want to push that one step further. I want to be able to show that um, if I look at s uh, iterated delta of times, delta times on beta, that that's just beta plus delta. Okay. So, um, but what is it, what do we even mean by beta plus delta when beta and delta are infinite ordinals? Well, in our world, we're gonna we specifically say what's the fundamental sequence for beta plus delta. We want to define that as the essential data of this ordinal. Um, and we just do what we've always done, which is we define that to be whatever the ordinal beta is plus the kth element of the fundamental sequence for delta. Notice that's asymmetrical as usual. That's how ordinal arithmetic works. It's, there's an asymmetry to it. Okay. So given that definition, it's really almost completely trivial. Okay. S delta of beta, the kth element of the fundamental sequence for that. Okay. What is that supposed to be? Oh, it's um, 
beta with, and then successor it delta of k times, well, that's exactly what this is. And then, so that's exactly going to be beta plus delta, the kth element of the fundamental sequence for beta plus delta. Okay. Or in other words, we've proved that if you take beta and you iterate a successor delta times, even if delta is infinite, that's just replicating the fundamental definition of how you add these infinite ordinals together. So again, if you want to look at um, <clears throat> this article, it's um, slow growing versus fast growing. It's, it's linked on the Wikipedia article. I should have put a link in here, sorry. Um, uh, then you'll see that the technique of proof for almost all the, the lemmas and theorems is exactly this, of just um, doing induction. And this is, the, this is the interesting part of the induction, where you want to prove that something is true for some little, little limit ordinal delta. You assume it's true for all things that le sneak up to it, and then you see if that's enough to prove that it's true for delta itself. Okay. So one thing to remind, remind you of here is that I haven't just proved that this is an equality just as ordinals, but really if you have this more precise idea of what these objects are, that they have specific fundamental sequences attached, we've really proved this, that the kth element of the fundamental sequence for beta plus delta is exactly the kth element of the fundamental sequence for um, beta with s iterated delta times. Okay, so what's the what's the the upshot of this? This is still, I think, a little bit heady stuff. Um, the upshot of this for for what we were interested in originally was what the heck was f phi one of one comma beta? Okay, it's exactly what you would guess based on the fast growing hierarchy at level one. It's just beta plus beta, or in other words, beta times two. Okay, so remember f one of some number x is just x times 2. And this just does exactly the same thing for essentially exactly the same reason. f1 was defined as iterate successor on x, x times. When that's a finite number, that's just a fancy way of saying double it. And even when it's an infinite number, even when it's this kind of tree ordinal gadget, it's exactly the same thing. Iterating successor beta times on beta is really the definition of doubling beta. OK, so I hope that wasn't too I don't know, theoretical. Um, the, rest, the rest of them, I'm not going to worry too much about the, the idea of proving stuff, OK? Um, so I'm going to get a little bit less rigorous, but maybe, uh, maybe a little more accessible. OK, so what about phi1 with the control argument being 2? If you remember your fast-growing hierarchy, f2, you're going to be able to guess the answer, but let's see, OK? So phi1 of 2 beta, by definition, is you look at the function that had control argument 1, you leave an open slot, to make it a function of one variable. You iterate that beta times with argument beta. Or in other words, I'm going to abbreviate doubling as capital D. Okay, And so you're doubling, you're taking beta, and you're doubling it beta times, quote unquote. Okay, Well, guess what? That just takes beta and multiplies it by 2 to the beta. And that has a completely well-defined meaning for ordinary ordinals, but it also has a completely well-defined meaning um, for the tree ordinals, okay? And let me tell you what the, what the difference is, okay? We always want to be able to say, given this object, what is the fundamental sequence for that guy? Let's, let me look at it, let me show you a specific example, and this is the, what we're going to be most interested in. Let's suppose we take our best friend, the smallest infinite ordinal, omega naught, and we're going to see what happens when you apply phi1 with control argument 2 to that sucker. Okay, I'm claiming it's omega naught times 2 to the omega naught. Very explicitly, what that says is the kth element of the fundamental sequence for that that sneaks up to it is, by definition, just double it k times. Oh, okay, now that's, that's very standard. That's a finite number. I know how to do that. I'm going to take this omega naught, and I'm just going to uh, multiply it by 2 to the O. Oh, Hey, omega naught of k, yeah, that's cool. Omega, the fundamental sequence for omega naught applied at level k is just the number k. This is a, one way to say, as I say here, um, that omega naught, the fundamental sequence for that, is just the identity function on the natural numbers. It's a very elegant way to say it. Okay. So sne we, what we're saying is we sneak up on this ordinal construction of taking this infinite ordinal omega naught times this other infinite ordinal 2 to the omega naught, we sneak up on it, 
by taking omega naught and just multiplying it by the finite number 2 to the k. Okay, so that's the fundamental sequence very explicitly for um, for this answer phi1 of 2 comma omega naught. Now, let's think about how this would work for usual ordinals. So this is where we need to know a little bit about usual ordinal arithmetic. Um, if you look at the soup, the supremum, or you can say the limit of this family of things, omega times 1, and then omega times 2, omega times 4, omega times 8, omega times 16, in terms of like the usual ordinals, we don't really care that those are powers of 2. Um, we just care that that's omega times a, a, a bunch of finite numbers that are going off to infinity. And so in terms of or usual ordinals, we just say, oh, that's just omega times omega, or in other words, omega squared. Another way to do that is, another standard fact about ordinal arithmetic, is that in the usual ordinal arithmetic, 2 to the omega is just another way of saying omega. It's just an, it's actually equal as ordinals to omega. So um, that's another way to justify that if we were just doing ordinary ordinals and we weren't paying careful attention to particular fundamental sequences, this is just really omega squared in a sort of an unnecessarily complicated way. Okay, but that's really not what we want to say. We do not want to say this is just equal to omega squared. Okay. Omega squared, if I just gave you the ordinal omega squared and said, come up with a simple fundamental sequence for that, you'd probably just say omega, omega times 2, omega times 3, omega times 4, and omega times 5, and omega times 6. And you wouldn't choose to use powers of 2 as the multipliers. And so we're actually going to pay attention to the fact that this is created, because it was created out of an analog of the fast-growing hierarchy, um, it's created as omega naught times powers of 2. Okay, and the, the the usefulness of that is really that that's what makes this whole one of our goals work, which is to get everything to be equal on the nose. We're going to relentlessly use fundamental sequences, and we're going to create them using this phi, which is the extension of the fast growing hierarchy. So it's all going to fit together in a in a beautiful way. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, let me just mention a little bit about phi one uh, at the three level applied to beta. And again, to be simple, we'll take the smallest um, infinite order, we'll take it omega naught. Okay, so what we've got here is, notice that we've got exponentiation happening, 2 to the omega naught. And I want to claim, that. okay, so phi, phi 1 at the 3 level is going to iterate that, and if you iterate that with argument omega naught, you're going to be iterating it an infinite number of times, or you're going to take sort of a limit of what happens if you iterate the phi1 with control argument 2 any finite number of times, OK? Um, so I claim it's going to be something at the level of epsilon naught in terms of its size if we think of it as an ordinary ordinal and throw away the fundamental sequence information, OK? Um, so in order to, I think, to really convince you of that, you might not be convinced given some of these things that looks like it's degenerating to something smaller than true exponentiation. Um, I'm going to actually have to give you the real honest-to-God definition of a tree ordinal and then do these calculations a little more carefully. But it turns out that it is correct that the the size in terms of ordinary ordinals of phi1 of 3 comma omega naught is exactly getting up to epsilon naught. And that's going to be a really nice calculation for later as well.